Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Things Written. Uh, today we're going to discuss seven problems with the 1914 date. Now, um, for those of you briefly who don't know, 1914 is a crucial date for Jehovah's Witnesses. It is the end of the Gentile times and when Jesus started paying attention in heaven as a king. Yes, I kid you not. His second coming is him staying exactly where he is. But this is a crucial date for the witnesses as it leads to the idea that the faithful and discreet slave, they're appointed in some way at that time. And in 1919, true worship is restored. Okay, so that's where the authority of the faithful slave gets transferred to them. Now, of course, this has evolved over the years, and uh, I'm doing an entire history of Jehovah's Witnesses from beginning to end, so we can tune in to uh, some of those videos for the details. So number seven, a day for a year rule. Now, this was always thought of as a rule in the Bible for a lot of the, you know, Adventists, right? The Millerites, people at that time speculating, even today, people use a day for a year, and they'll go to the scriptures and try to find the secret code, right, of when the end is going to come. And Jehovah's Witnesses have been doing that for a very long time. So you have your basic numbers from Daniel, 1260, 1290, 1335, 2300, right? Those all are day for a year. Then you have your Jubilee, right? This is 50 times 50. That's a day for a year. And then you have your Gentile times, which is 2,520, right? Day for a year. So you use all those and then Israel's double. So it was uh, 2450. And those were all used originally by Jehovah's Witnesses for like half a century, okay? All day for years. So in that sense, it's a rule. Those prophetic time periods, as they would call them, would be a day for a year. Problem is, it's not a rule anymore. In fact, it's an exception. The only one that Jehovah's Witnesses use a day for a year is the Gentile times, the 2520. So that's not a rule anymore. It's an exception. And so there is no justification for this 2,520 years other than the fact that you need it for your 1914-1919 chronology, where you get your supposed authority from. All right, let's go to number six. Number six is very interesting. I wanted to share a couple of books I've read as I was reading these books. These books are by a fellow named Jason Staples. Now, you don't have to be afraid of them. You're a Christian. These are scholarly books, but they're... You wouldn't be able to tell if he's a Christian or not a Christian, which good scholarly books are. And I highly recommend them. And the usage of Israel and Judah and the distinction between those two. Now, I had kind of stumbled across this because in Miller's chronology, Millerite chronology, they have 2,520 days. It ends in, of course, 1843. But he starts it when, I think it was Manasseh, gets taken to Babylon. He made everything line up with 43. So he's working backwards. And so, of course, I started thinking, well, you know, 722 was when Assyria took over Israel. There's a distinction in the Bible between Israel and Judah. So let me just review that. The 12 tribes of Israel were only there for a brief period of time. King Saul, David, and Solomon in a little bit of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, that's when they split. So there were 10 tribes called Israel and then Judah. Israel gets destroyed. And, you know, a lot of, obviously a lot of the, the people fled to Judea. And then Judah gets destroyed years later by Babylon. Okay. Now there are restoration prophecies in the Bible, both about Israel and Judah. There's new covenant promises, both to Israel and to Judah. These get conflated often by scholars, not just scholars, but especially religious folk that aren't acquainted with this or realize the significance. These books go in great detail. I'm going to do a whole episode on them. They are not to be conflated. You must always take Israel and Judah as separate. And he goes to great detail of how it was done. In fact, in Israel, right, where they're talking about the restoration from Babylon, he does not mention the 12 tribes. He mentions Judah. Benjamin and the Levites. And if you look at writers during that time, they don't consider the restoration complete by the temple. The temple was a step, but the restoration was Israel. That is why the apostles asked Jesus, are you restoring Israel at this time? After his resurrection, not Judah. Now the Messiah, the Christ, was to be king of what? 
Judah? Well, the king comes from Judah, true, but he's not king of Judah. The Hasmonean dynasty in the second century BCE had an independent kingdom led by the high priest. It was free and autonomous for almost 100 years, but it was the land of Judah. The Messiah was supposed to be the king of Israel, the 12 tribes. What did he say to his disciples? In the recreation, you will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. What do Jehovah's Witnesses count from when they have their 607 BCE? The time when the king of Judah, Zedekiah, is overthrown or is taken into captivity. That's a problem because Jesus or the Christ is not the king of Judah. He's the king of Israel. If you were going to count when the last time someone sat on Jehovah's throne was Solomon, right? What it says in Chronicles. What was Solomon? The 12 tribes of Israel. What is the Messiah supposed to be? The king of 12 tribes of Israel. In fact, the whole world, obviously. But it starts with the 12 tribes. So what's the problem then? Jehovah's Witnesses are looking to the day, not when the Messiah was to rule over Judah, which they say is 607, of course. It would be when it was a 12-tribe nation. Because the Messiah is not restoring Judah. Judah's restoration is not the restoration prophecy's fulfillment. You're using the wrong date because the king of Judah wouldn't be the date that you would use. Jesus is the type or the anti-type of Israel, and the Messiah is to rule Israel, not Judah. Not only that, it is funny how many times they were subjugated. It was like three times before they were destroyed. You know, which one are you going to use? If you're basically a vassal king, are you really a king? I mean, they have to because that's how it matches up. But if you're really being honest with yourself, if you're a vassal king, you're not really a king. You know, the whole idea of Messiah's kingdom was to be independent and then all the nations would be blessed by that kingdom. You would not be using 607. Now, further problems. This is what we were talking about. This is my number five. So we were talking about how Jesus returned. He's supposed to return. But Jehovah's Witnesses believe that he's staying exactly where he is. And <laughs> he's just paying attention now. But he's paying attention as a king. Like, what was he doing the whole time? Was he not paying attention? Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. Okay. So also the Christ was offered once for all time to bear the sins of many. And the second time that he appears... It will be apart from sin, and he will be seen by those earnestly looking for him for salvation. Does it say, <laughs> and the second time he starts to pay attention as a king and be seen by eyes of faith for those looking for salvation? No, it's just one of the most ridiculous things they have ever come up with. That and the overlapping generations is just so stupid. Um, no, the return of the Messiah Jesus is going to be returned. Whether that is done to his followers is not the point. It is not paying attention as a king. It's just really, really stupid. So again, their interpretation of what happens in 1914 is just silly. Number four, let's go on. It's Again, slightly what I was talking about is how these things have changed. Originally, it was 1874. Jesus literally came here in 1874. They were moving these dates around because 1874 and 1878 were important. One was his visible presence and one was his kingdom power. It's just so silly, I know, but <laughs> they ended up taking those two and conflating them and putting them in 1914. After 50 years, um, and even in 1919, they were still teaching that. When they were evidently approved or semi-approved, or now they have it changed and it's not really approved, but it's kind of approved. <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is actually true. 
This is what they believe. Uh, just taking dates and moving them around and saying, well, this happened then. When for 50 years you say that, and then you just move it and change the meaning and conflate it and then say, this is, this is what people are dedicating their lives to. Absolute nonsense. If you heard a Mormon talk like this or, or a Seventh-day Adventist or a Baptist, you would think they're out of your mind. And Jehovah's Witnesses look at it, oh, the light's getting brighter, brother. No, the light's not been turned on yet. Bad fruit, a bad tree, sorry, cannot produce good fruit. And any type of chronology is a bad tree, and it's going to produce bad fruitage. All right, number three. Originally, Jehovah's Witnesses said 606 BCE. I kid you not. If you look at all the articles, and I'm reading them all, if you look at all the books, and I'm reading them all, it's 606 BC, right from the Herald of the Morning, 606 BCE. The problem is it doesn't match up with 1914. It's 1915. In fact, later on, <laughs> Russell knew this and started to change the publications to say 1915. And then when the war happened, later on, the next editions kept it back to 1914. And I have an interview where Russell says, in a newspaper interview, obviously, uh, on 1914, 1915, because they knew it was off. And even Barber, one of his last uh, articles, he says 1914, spring 1915. They recognized the math was wrong. And then they kept it that way all <laughs> until the 1940s. And then they changed it to 607. Didn't tell anybody, oh, there's a great archaeological discovery. It's off by a year, but because there's no zero year, uh, it's still prediction how good. You know, they do talk about how they changed it and said, you know, this is garbage about the zero year and stuff. And so it's still the prediction how good in 1914. They don't tell you that they knew that beforehand and were talking vastly between 1914 and 15. And at that time, it was wrong. It was 1915. It's a great quote from... Raymond Franz in his book, he says, it's a very easy thing to do on paper. Six, we just change that to seven. It's like God's written it in stone to Jehovah's Witness. Might as well be God. Just Ten Commandments with the finger of God. Because that's how Jehovah's Witnesses will view it. Oh, well, that's good. Makes sense to me. All right. Number two on my list. Uh, in that actual scripture in Luke, it's in the future. It's not in the past. Now, I know you can get pedantic about uh, tenses and how it could be. Luke 21, 24, they will fall by the edge of the sword. Who's going to fall by the edge of the sword? What is he talking about here? What's the context? <laughs> the context is Jerusalem's destruction. How do I know that? It says so in verse 20. Jerusalem will be surrounded by encamped armies. That's the Romans destroying Jerusalem. And he says, this is going to happen at a future time. He says, they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led into captivity in all the nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Which meant actual Jerusalem and which meant the actual Jews. One of the big parts of the Bible students was that the Jews would be restored. Actual Israelites, right? Restoration of Israel. Actual Jerusalem. Now this has become all symbolic to just mean Gentile nations and Jesus paying attention. It has nothing to do with the original scripture. That is in a future tense, number one. And number two is not talking about Anything that you're talking about. The lease had ended in 1914, and he's the rightful ruler of mankind, yet everything goes on exactly the same for 120 years. That is just so absurd. But people are dying in this religion for not taking blood transfusions because they believe in 1914. And it's been said that this group now is the only channel of God and in order to survive the coming Armageddon, you must do what they say and be involved in watchtower routine or you will die. Okay, my number one here is something that I came across when I was studying the Millerites. And I have a book that I'm going to share with you as well. And it was debunking the Millerite prophecies of 1843 at this time. 
It was written in 1840, and this was a scholarly gentleman, so he knew what he was talking about. And I remember reading it too, going, wow, this guy is a heads and tails about most of these books. I read, you know, a lot of the Jehovah's Witness old books. And he brought up this point about the Millerites, but it applies equally to Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, what they do is they say there's a prophetic year. 360 days is a prophetic year. And they're basing it upon a lunar calendar, 30 days in a month. So then they take that and they start doing their calculations. The problem is when you're using a lunar calendar, you have to add a month every five years. You have to add a month every five years or your calculations are on. Now, Jews and Israelites used lunar calendars. Why would you switch to a solar <laughs> calendar, you know, way of interpreting it from the lunar? Every five years, you have to add an extra month. None of these people do that because it doesn't work out with their calculations. But again, it just shows the amateurness of the supposed scholarship. Jehovah's Witnesses are good at manipulating people, scaring people, getting people hooked, and then you're believing in nonsense like this. No Jehovah's Witnesses don't go to your door and say, you know, Jesus started paying attention in 1914 and it was changed in 1874 and don't worry about the lunar calendar. Don't worry, that's a future tense. They talk to you about, would you like to live in a paradise? Would you like to never grow old? Well, yeah. Who wouldn't? I mean, they don't even go into it in detail anymore. I mean, even when I was a kid, they still used to have, remember the Live Forever book? They had it still in detail, a whole bunch of stuff. Now it's kind of like, Trust us, in 1914, Jesus came. Uh, he didn't even come as king. <laughs> he didn't return. He stayed exactly where he was. So I get a kick out of it because it's it's so silly, it's stupid, it's comical. Unfortunately, it's so serious because people's lives are being ruined by this group. So thanks for joining me. I'll have much more topics to cover on these and uh, many more concerning the Jehovah's Witness religion. So join us next time on... Beyond the Things Written.